Vsem deni s frontman Condemnatio Christi združujemo filonsko glasbo z metalom. The story of the Condemnatio Christi started in 2009. Two years later we recorded album entitled Incest. I mainly do everything alone. I compose, arrange, make lyrics, also record most of the stuff alone. From the beginning of Condemnatio Christi till today I, I think I changed about 16 members. The last changeover was I don't know, a few weeks ago. It's hard to find the right people because the project is really diverse. I mix a lot of genres. Condemnatio Christi was meant to be as provocative as it can get, but over the years when I got wiser, I don't feel like being this black metal misanthrope anymore. So I just wanted to, to present my, my view on Catholic Church, maybe all the religions. There is still, still some uh, unconventional lyrics involved in, in all the albums, but they are, they are not against the religion, they are just against the entire humanity. They are kind of misanthropic, but on a, on a higher level. I wrote this album when I had, I think, 13 or 14 years. I had this leg surgery. I decided I want to play the guitar. My father took me to the shop. He actually carried me on his back because I wasn't able to walk. Then, after a year, I already decided to record an album. You can find a bigger underground band that supports you, that takes you on tour. But it's the best way, I think, to, to have friends in other countries, to make an exchange gigs. It isn't the way that makes you famous, but like black metalers would say, it's the true way. <laughs> Pozdrav, mi smo free ride iz Zagreba. Tu smo u Medici, najcool mjestu u gradu. Malo smo mamurni, ali daćemo sve od sebe. We are free ride from Zagreb. We are playing metal core. Don't cry. Something like that. Yeah. A person can be called Slobodan Prijevoz. Slobodan, yeah. So we were, we were joking, we were like 14. Free ride sounded cool at the time, so it stuck. I personally, personally don't believe in genres. I think good music is good music and that's what matters. 
Yeah. I signed that, yeah. yeah. We are really good at making heavy music, so we try to incorporate all of, all of these styles into heavier music. So I'm uh, Ivan, I'm playing the guitar in band Freeride. <laughs> My name is Christian, I play guitar. Uh, then I'm the bass player, and I play the bass player. <laughs> in the free, you, in have the a, you have a, like yeah, a I human have and you play a human I that should, plays yeah. bass, yeah, okay, so I play. <laughs> I start off usually with a riff, maybe with a sample, then we get together, work on it and listen to it for a month or two, then rearrange yeah. it and that's it. The, the thing is, the people that are coming to our show will be drunk, so you need to be like connected. You need how to get they, into their minds. How are they listening your songs when they're drunk, so you need to be drunk when you're working your songs. Yeah, we try to make the songs that will work good in a live situation because that's where people will find out about our band. When people are hanging around in front of the venue, we just give them some rakia, they get faced and they always tell you the song. at so many weird places it's we have too too many stories in, in the UK we slept in a park that was specifically designed to, to walk dogs there it was Sunday and I we just woke up with hundreds of dogs <laughs> around <laughs> us yeah The scene is really small actually, it's growing day by day, lots of kids get into it but uh, it's not really accepted. I think we are a little bit different from other we're, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are always like positive and... Spontaneous. Yeah. We don't know, we are, we are far behind from mo more advanced countries. The, the further you go east, it, the worse it gets. Yeah. So here it's actually okay, I guess. We are in the European Union, so things are going on faster. Each country has its own, like... Something. We love to travel, man. Yeah. It's really nice. The world is really nice, nice place. Yeah. My name is Damir, I'm drummer for Dozer and I'm from Sarajevo. The band was formed in October of 2008 and we've been active ever since. We sort of play like a cross mix between trash metal and metal punk. It's a thing about beauty and uh, despair. It helps you express yourself in ways that some other genres of music can't and won't allow you to. So uh, to me it's a liberating thing and uh, I welcome everyone who takes part in it, so to speak. People sort of give you the strange look if, if you have long hair or tattoos or, or uh, I don't know, look, look, look a little bit different than the norm. We're doing our best to, to make it, to, to, to explain it, to explain to people what, what alternative subcultures or cultures are, what they're about, what they perceive and what they uh, can 
generally bring to, 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 to young people especially. I mean, our lyrics are very important to us and we uh, made a conscious decision to uh, do it in Bosnian in our native language, not, not in English, because we're mostly expressing ourselves to our people, to, to people in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in Balkan regions. Mostly there are some darker themes you know, about death, about uh, relationships that have gone downhill, about stuff that just, you know, makes a man think about some things that, that really should be well thought out. Bosnia is still a, a, a place that's relatively unknown to the rest of the world. And uh, it sometimes surprises me the stereotypes that people have. People that, are, that come from a, what we like to call is a civilized, civilized part of the Europe. You know, some people still think there's a war here, which is unbelievable. I don't really much remember about the war itself back then, you know. And uh, I spent most of the war in uh, Croatia as a refugee. My father was left behind. Uh, my mother just had a second child, you know, my brother, which was a four-month-year-old baby. And uh, war is no place for a baby. I mean, war is no place for everyone, but especially not for a baby. So it was, you know, it, it was tough. Uh, to some extent, it still is. People are still, still having the, generally having the same, same old problems. Unemployment is a problem everywhere. But uh, Bosnia is a, is a beautiful country, and I'm not saying it because I'm a citizen of it. It really is, and people should visit it, see it for themselves. There's so much things to see. It really relieves a great deal amount of stress. Yeah, definitely. Music is definitely an outlet to, to process the, the, the current situation. It's quite liberating to know you have a means to get, that, get your message out to the people who may need to hear it or may not want to hear it. doesn't matter. It, it can be a, a connection between people just to bring them closer to some things, especially religious things, especially here in Bosnia and Herzegovina because we're obsessed with religion in a bad way. Through a metal music, you can say what is honestly, and, and, and what, is, what is honest and true about it, and maybe, maybe one day through that dialogue, we'll maybe reconcile our differences and stuff like that, but it'll be a long way to go. The band is called Gomila Nesklada and actually the right translation for it would be, I don't know, Gomila means a bunch or a pile of something and Nesklada means dissonance, disharmony, something like that. I'm a localist, there are four more people, two guitars, bass guitar and drums and we come from Nikšić, we are from Montenegro, we are the pioneers of the metal sound here in Montenegro. We are the first ones that uh, recorded the original album, that is not demo, that is not TP, actually the right metal album in Montenegro. <laughs> In general, it's not that developed country in music sense. 
that's not the case also. The hardcore is not only a music, it's actually a movement and the only way that, that you can be recognized and the only way that you can play you know, the big gigs and those things is to connect with the people that are not from your country. No media coverage, no bigger market for Montenegro, you know. Montenegro are lazy, they can't do anything, they don't know how to do anything. And maybe that is the truth, but if we talk about music, it is not. And that's why we are here, to prove them wrong, to prove that we know how to do things like everyone else in the world. You can have a good gig if the people that came to hear you didn't have a good time. To make them feel our energy and vice versa, you know. If they jump, I jump, if I jump, they jump, and those things. After every gig we go home and I'm sick for five days. My uh, throat is sore, my muscles hurt, and those things, you know. If you wake up in the morning after your uh, gig and you don't feel tired, <laughs> you didn't get the best from yourself. We are sincere with, our, with the people that listen to us, and we are sincere to the music that we play, because we play it from the heart and from our minds, and that's the best that can come out of us. So. If it's garbage, well, okay, what can we do? But if it's okay, that's also good. <laughs>
Sì, vocalisti Crossbones. Uh, uniamo bene, chitarristi. Uniamo Claude, chitarristi, bassisti, <laughs> dentisti. Yes. Sure, Fuck right in the pussy! <laughs> as, with the, as with the godfathers of metal music and rock music, our, our music is, is based on, on riffs. Riffs and uh, harmony. It all started back in 1996 as a, a group of friends and we were trying to, to find a name for the band. I just took an English and Albanian dictionary, just opened it and on the first page I saw Crossbones. Metal is like uh, a kind of state of mind. Uh, it's like I don't know Jackson Pollock to, uh, to the paintings. Recording process and selling CDs is is not a is not a big business in in Albania. In terms of rock music, we don't have a large tradition of uh, rock bands. Five six bands. It started out in in the in the 90s and and then it uh, stuck there. We've been always trying to to build an audience by our own music, and it seems that the audience has a very good response to it. Actually, uh, a CNN breaking news or something, and it says Albania days of rage. It wasn't labeled as civil war, but it was on on the margins of a civil war. And they were filming the, the riots. We couldn't sleep uh, without shootings, you know. And that's the reason we we called our first album Days of Rage. Some of our songs sound better in Albanian than, than, in, than in, in English. Maybe it's easier for them to... To understand. To understand and to, to learn, I mean, to sing along. If you ask us the, our our vision, me, I think it's kind of uh, of a hope uh, that yeah, there is still hope. everything is is changing. <laughs> We play in open air festivals where everybody can come. Open air festivals are very, very, very rare. Small country, indifferent to to rock music. Every step in Albania, uh, from arts, uh, music, it's kind of uh, started 50 years later than the other part of the world. But there are some really good people and good friends of ours who who are trying to have rock music back. As long as you feel it, as long as you have it in your blood, I mean, just let it go. Sure. Judgment
stuck in a in a empty room dark dark empty room and you are trying to get out but you don't see any light coming out from nowhere and you are just trying to to break the wall to go on the to see the sun and then you're just just telling yourself I gotta hold on I gotta fight with this thing I can't be stuck in this dark cold Try place forever where you find the strength when you 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 don't even know you have the strength. You have it all the time, but you didn't use it because you didn't uh, know to use it. No one taught you to use the strength that, that's in you. And then when you accomplish something, you just feel like that dark, dark uh, place that you were before didn't exist. You like you never were there. Like you were always that person that you are. You weren't you. Здраво, ние сме в Уснота от Скопия и Прилепи Куманова. Панкс, които мислят, че са мелхедс, първаме да играем арт-рак, но не бе да се отстава от дисторшен за много време. Всички мемберите имат идеи, но има един работа, която uh, they they have to follow. A lot of the ideas are accepted, and finally we make the final product together. Everybody from the band they uh, uh, they compose their own thing. Zlatko composes his music. I compose mine. And there in it, if uh, he loves it, then we put it. Basically, whoever plays the part gets the final say, and how it's gonna sound, and also. Lyrics-wise, whoever sings it, you know, gets the final say in lyrics. I think it's sort of worked out well because we've had a lot of lineup changes, and you know, if you get a new member in the band and just tell him, you know, play what the last guy did, and it's just sort of a waste of talent, I think. The second album is called "You're Empty." It's sort of an interesting way the the theme of the album came out sort of naturally it, we I didn't plan anything from the start it just came out it was sort of a, I don't know it has this air of sort of apathy you know characters in the songs trying to do something but not really accomplishing anything and it going nowhere and it's a very I don't know nihilistic apathetic Somebody organizes like a festival or a thing for uh, demo bands, for unsigned bands. They just, you know, they basically treat us like shit. They say, you know, you can, uh, there's a stage, you know, go play something for 20 minutes and that's it. You know, you win something and you don't even know Without if you're gonna get it. Check. Sometimes some band members are not allowed to go in those clubs <laughs> when they <laughs> should play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, ha I had the idea to, to try to play in maybe Bulgaria, maybe in Serbia. But we can expect uh, a lot more, lot, more pe lot more people in the audience there. The organizers, I mean at least the major organizers and the clubs are sort of passive about it. They get most of their money from cover bands, you know, playing other people's stuff. And when it comes to underground music, it's not like uh, they don't put any effort in 
promoting the gigs themselves, you know. They, they won't even share a link to your gig on their Facebook page or something like that. If you say uh, Macedonia in Italy, they'll think you're talking about a salad. Здравейте, аз съм Драго от Вайлантъри, басист на Вайлантъри, това е приятелката ми. Тина, казвам се. Soul the Band plays kind of, as I said, melodic metal. It's really a kind of mixture. Our first album was very experimental, because we had from the very harsh and raw vocals to the very melodic and lyrical vocals. Uh, we're in Varna, uh, we're on the central beach, uh, Mentola, pretty nice uh, place to be. Uh, it's cold, but I really love the, the weather right now because uh, in the summer it's like packed for, uh, with full of people. I like the solitude right now, it's really peaceful, you can speak with the sea and the sea can hear you and speak you back, I guess. We really like uh, to put folk elements in almost every song, uh, Bulgarian folk elements. So, no, but uh, they're really uh, covered up under the metal, uh, not like uh, put a bagpipe or something like that. We try to use metal to represent our country. We supported the Monomart uh, a few months ago, so we had the chance to see what it's like to be on a big stage once uh, the organization behind this we learned so much from this experience so yeah i'm the bass player and do the cover arts the designs uh, pretty much everything that's uh, representative to the band our composer is pretty much uh, making all the mixing and uh, mastering back himself have roles and our composer comes up with an idea that sends it around. It all starts with one guy. We like the songs, we add something from us and they become ours and pretty much we need each one of us to keep the, the band going. It's not like there's a main leader or main face of the band. I remember one particular time uh, with the song Over You, it's called Over You, um, the singer and the, and the guitarists were, were having a bit of a quarrel about this song. Uh, it really didn't sound that good. Everybody else uh, not hated it, but didn't really <laughs> like it. And it was, it was very, very, very hard to create this song. But in the end, this song became the, the biggest uh, hit of the band. Uh, in Serbia we played a festival invited by a great guy who had some technical problems our keyboard decided to break uh, in the middle of a song where there was only a keyboard uh, left and it was supposed to be a dramatic uh, stop with only keyboards. We pretty much wrecked the place with uh, strange sounds. The crowd's faces like... And uh, they tried to be understanding, wow, that's some new music, you know, wow. We're planning a tour around Europe. Uh, there's gonna be a Vacan metal battle next year in Bulgaria. That will be the first time in for a Bulgarian band to play on Vacan and it will be something really, really big. I hope whoever wins, of course, I hope we win, whoever wins to 
represent Bulgaria very, very strong because we do have really good bands, we do have really nice uh, scene and not having a single famous and uh, successful band abroad is really a shame because they are very, very talented bands in Bulgaria. Alma Vomastec de la trupa The Hourglass din Cluj-Napoca, România. We are not in the 90s anymore where oh, when uh, people were just gathering in a garage and start playing and oh everyone uh, is going to see them now it's full of bands it's full of acts and uh, if somebody wants to make something right everything has to uh, to start with a studio product me and uh, Bogdan our drummer who is also my bo boyfriend met with the former guitarist from the previous project and we sat on a table and I told both of them that I'm gonna make something else I'm gonna make something right <laughs> starting with a demo it is of course mainly uh, symphonic metal influenced but uh, it also has a lot of crazy synths industrial rhythms I prepare the scores so the scores and the tablature for for the band to to know what they have to play <laughs> We played in Germany three times so far. It, it was a pleasant experience every time for us. German people are a little bit different because they are more, more open to new sounds, to new bands. Romanians are a little bit skeptical. The, the public who already knows us is really crazy and uh, completely devoted. I mean, they, they scream, they sing along, they headbang, but if we go into a new city where nobody knows us, everyone is like, mmm. Unfortunately, Romanian people are a little bit narrow-minded. I mean, most of them relate metal with satanism and all kind of crap so 30 seconds they're like no 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 oh god no what's that oh guitar oh bass oh drums no no this is just noise in our days it has to be much more than music nobody wants to see a bored band on a stage standing like this and singing because that's not <laughs> okay. Everybody wants show. Well, uh, for the first album, the songs are pretty personal, most of them. The ICRA is about uh, the fact that we should be responsible of our actions and we will one day pay for our actions. Not in the biblical way, but for example, if, if one harms another, the will can turn and we never know when. Nobody needs a Bible or a priest to, to tell them that.
Strelnik of the band was formed in 88. That was still in former Yugoslavia. A year or two later, we released our first and, and only vinyl. And then in 1998, we released uh, a, a CD single, Beachcraft, with uh, one song and uh, five or six remixes. That was that uh, con controversy with, uh, with the cover of the CD. So we had uh, Holy Mary with the rat in her lap instead of baby Jesus, which was actually our reaction to uh, Archbishop uh, then, uh, who was uh, uh, attacking Slovenian constitution, which allowed women to choose whether to perform abortion or not. Uh, at the time, so we were indicted, uh, but uh, never got uh, accused, actually. Beach crop, beach crop, beach crop, beach crop. There was a strong uh, youth club scene uh, because those clubs in, in, in former Yugoslavia were founded by uh, go governmental and uh, municipal institutions. A lot of very good bands emerged. A lot of very, very nice things were happening uh, through the underground. And I don't think that uh, uh, it would be possible without, without those connections, not just for young bands, for any bands to, to, to play in, in, in other places. Although there was a lot of censorship and uh, stuff like that, but uh, it, was, it was quite open. And uh, those clubs were functioning quite well. Uh, with the entering of former republics of Yugoslavia into free market uh, capitalism, they had to be more market oriented it's it's quite hard for for young bands uh, to find uh, decent exposure and uh, places to play Mi smo Equation z Murska sobota. I am David and I play the keys. I'm Miloš and I'm the guitar player. I'm Goran and I play drums. I'm Andre and I play bass. We just, uh, you know, got together uh, once, twice, three times, and uh, it sounded interesting. So we decided we'd make a project out of it, uh, and from a project came a band, and uh, we started playing, started creating, and now we're here still in the creative process. Well, maybe it's not typical metal. It's not in any case typical, because first of all, we're instrumental. Second of all, we're mixing all the styles. Metal is just a part of it. Well, uh, we all played in different bands before this band, uh, mostly metal. We were evolving through that music, you know. It didn't just stay with metal, it, it went further on. We mixed it with everything we could find, and uh, that's the result, like a collage.
know, most people in Slovenia are uh, are very conservative. Uh, metal is very under underappreciated, uh, and uh, people still think uh, it's satanic, just because it's loud and because it's good. <laughs> uh, it's hard to get gigs in Slovenia and even outside Slovenia, no? especially when you're from a country that's so secluded from everything. <laughs> Because they don't give you a chance if your uh, if your music does not have Slovenian lyrics, because that's the only thing that's uh, actually coming out here. Uh, for I can give a good example. For uh, do you know Sidarta? They have Slovenian lyrics. They always had Slovenian lyrics, and they made one album with English lyrics, and it was a total flop. But uh, we don't have any lyrics not Slovenian and not English. We have an interesting story. We went to a gig to uh, Croatia and uh, we were stopped on the border and they were checking our papers and we had to explain to them we're a band, we're going on a gig. And uh, the guys on the border said, uh, come in, you know, they sent him in and he had to show them the videos on YouTube. He had to show them each and every one video and the, the guy was really surprised, he liked it. And we were waiting for about an hour there at the border just because he wanted to hear the music. Hello guys, do you know how many guitars do you need to change a light bulb? Well, the correct answer is eight, one to change it and seven to say how oh, they would have done it differently and better, of course. <laughs> so. We are two million countries <laughs> under the Alps. Here we have Austrians and then Italians and Balkans. And, and here, the other the guys Alps, in the south here are the Alps, Alps in the sea. So basically, <laughs> from the Roman time, everybody had to walk through our country. They rape all the men and kill all the women. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, yeah, kept, we, were we kept, we kept, yeah, we, we all got fucked. Yeah, <laughs> Hey, I'm Johnny. I'm I'm singing at, at Multiferia, and this is Uros. He's playing bass, so we are a part of Multiferia from Slovenia. We were I don't know 13 years old, you know, in uh, schoolmates that were just playing with some cheap guitars and trying to play cover songs, and eventually. You know, we started to involve and uh, we fell into this black metal movement and then started to create different music from then on. We've toured a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you compare us to other European countries, you know, it's a small country, we don't have really strong scene, and, uh, you know, there's not like, we don't have any labels that support uh, metal music in this country, we don't have any uh, I know we don't have metal magazine or anything like that, you know. So it's not really easy, but um, there is local scene, and you know everybody's trying to do their best. You need much more energy, time, and uh, especially money. Ah. <laughs> we do the basic feeling of the song when the song is done. We choose the name of the song if it is really slow and uh, massive. It needs that kind of a name. So then Uroš writes the lyric, we do the pre-production here in this studio. Everybody comes from a different side, but in the end, in the band, it's important that everybody brings his own sound, his own ideas, and then you get something new, you know. And we ship it to Sweden to mix it. We do all the designs um, by ourselves, yeah. um, because it is important to have all the... Um, 
the whole package, like design is important, music is important, lyrics are important, uh, name of the songs, image on the stage, everything. I was talking to one agent, hi, I'm Roman, he said, hi, I'm American. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.